Hello and welcome to my channel, the place where I take you on RV tours, campground tours, to hiking destinations, and so much more. Now in this video, we're going to test the Renogy 200 watt Shadow Flux solar panel and the Redodo MPPT 40 amp solar charge controller by creating a mock RV lithium solar setup to charge a Redodo 12.8 volt 300 amp hour battery. Here's my mock solar setup. So the solar panels are connected to the solar controller. The solar controller is connected to the Victron shunt and the shunt's connected to the battery. battery. We'll test the capacity of the Redotto 12.8 volt 300 amp hour battery in another lab comparison video. We're gonna assemble these items just as you might do in your RV and see how well they perform together as a system and against their specifications. We will then put the Renogy 200 watt Shadow Flux solar panels to a shape test by blocking off parts of the panels to see how well they really perform. Let's start off by reviewing these items, starting with the Renogy 200 watt solar panel packaging. I ordered two of these solar panels, and I have to say, when I saw the boxes FedEx dropped at my door, I was dreading what I might find inside as the boxes were in rough shape. However, when I opened the boxes, I found that Renogy had protected them quite well with expanded polyethylene foam on the surface of the panels, around the metal frame, and styrofoam on the corners. Here are my first impressions. The Renogy Shadow Flex Solar Panel features a sleek, blacked out, low profile design with a durable aluminum frame and a compact, lightweight build. It has a clean aesthetic suitable for various installations, such as a car or a boat, and is designed for various environmental conditions with an IP67 rating for water and dust protection. The panel is smaller and 10% lighter than traditional solar panels, weighing in about 24 pounds and measures 41.4 inches long by 22.8 inches wide and 1.2 inches thick. Now for the key technical specifications. There is a lot of technology in these N-type solar panels like the 16 bus bar design and cell level bypass diodes, which should provide for some great power output. I am curious to see just what the maximum watts is that this technology will produce when the panels are lying flat as they would on the roof of my adventure van. Obviously, I'm not expecting to achieve 200 watts each as they will not be angled toward the sun, but how many watts can I expect to get? Also, I selected the Renogy Shadow Flex Solar Panel because of its anti-shading technology, which allows it to generate power even when parts of the panel are shaded. I want to test how well this technology really works as my current Go Power solar panel stops working entirely when parts of it is shaded. Now let's discuss the Redodo 40 Amp MPPT solar charge controller, starting with the packaging. It did come well packaged in its factory box, held in place by expanded polyethylene foam. Inside the box was the 40 amp solar controller, mounting hardware, temperature sensor, and a well-written user manual. My first impressions of the Redodo 40 amp MPPT solar charge controller is that it, I liked the matte blue main body of the controller, which is coated with a rubberized powder finish. It is constructed from an aluminum alloy, which helps dissipate heat. It also has a distinct white coated heat sink on the rear or side of the unit. The front panel features a liquid crystal display and four control buttons, while the terminal block at the bottom provides connections for solar input, battery, and 12 volt load. The terminal block also includes an RS-485 communication port for connecting a Bluetooth adapter or other accessories and a separate port for a temperature sensor. The unit measures approximately 9.65 inches long by 7.07 .07 inches wide by 3.25 inches high and weighs 5.72 pounds. Here are the key technical specifications. 
However, I will focus on its ability to charge the battery with as much solar power as possible. As for the Redodo 12.8 volt 300 amp hour lithium battery, I will conduct a full review in another video as I want to run a full capacity test and that process can take days to do. For this video, I am simply using it as a place to store all the incoming solar power. As for testing equipment, I will list the items used in this video in the video description. So let's get started. I started off by setting up the solar panels flat outside in full sun and connected them in series. I then connected the 30 foot solar extension wires with the solar panels, MC4 connectors, and ran them into my lab so that I could do this experiment in the comfort of AC. I then connected the Redodo solar charge controller to the Redodo lithium battery, passing through the Victron smart energy shunt. And finally, I connected the solar extension cables to the Redodo solar charge controller. As you can see, everything worked perfectly and the solar charge controller was now charging the Redodo lithium battery with around 320 watts. With everything set up, I was now collecting data through both the Redodo solar charge controller app and the Victron app. For the shading test, I have noticed that some people are placing objects directly on the solar panel to prevent the sun from getting to the panel. Now, I don't believe that this is an accurate reflection of shade, so I created shade using a box blocking the sun and placed items directly on the panel to compare the difference. Okay, so here is 25% shade. As you can see, here is 50% shade. And right here is 75% shade. Here's a table of the results. So in summary, I must state right off that I was very impressed with how the solar panel performed with and without shade. The skies were hazy with some high clouds. The solar panels were not angled toward the sun, yet the solar panels still managed outputs of over 80% of the specifications. In comparison, my Go Power solar panel was right around 50% of its specification on this same day. When you review the shading results, you'll see how well this technology works, as the solar panels were still able to produce power at 90% shaded, whereas my Go Power solar panel practically stopped producing after 25% shading. Also, as I expected, placing objects directly on the solar panel caused the solar panel to stop producing power once more than 50% of the panel was blocked. The solar panels generated a maximum of 330 watts of power while lying flat on a hazy day. The Shadow Flux technology was able to produce power even when 90% of the solar panels were shaded. The Redodo MPPT solar charge controller worked well at converting the solar power into a stable charge for the lithium battery, and I even liked the app. So I hope you found all this information useful. Thank you so much for joining me today. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you can get notified of my upcoming videos. Bye for now.